Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Before we get started, to be able to start in a good way, I would like to humbly acknowledge my sisters and brothers from our First Nations, our First People, from Treaty 6, 7, and 8, to also my Métis sisters and brothers all across Alberta to whom this land holds a very, very deep importance. And I also, to my Jewish brothers and sisters today as well, too, happy Purim. Um, this is one of those moments where I'm just so honored to stand in front of you to celebrate one of the most incredible women in this province. Violet King Henry defied expectations and broke barriers at every step of life. Growing up in Calgary, she knew from an early, early age that she wanted to be a lawyer. In her grade 12 yearbook, there's a caption there that says, Violet wants to be a criminal lawyer. The fact that no black person had ever received a law degree in Alberta before, it just didn't seem to faze her at all. Neither did the fact that there had never been a black woman lawyer in all of Canada. When she attended University of Alberta in 1948, she was one of only three women in the Faculty of Law. It's inspiring to think of her, her bravery and her perseverance and her passion to live her dreams. I am so proud to be able to announce today that on the Federal Building Plaza today, right out here, it is being renamed as the Violet King Henry Plaza. Um, the importance of this, to be able to honor this beautiful woman, to be able to come here as a community to gather for festivals and events, renaming this plaza gives life to her story so that generations after us will know who she is and understand her contributions to this province and to our country. And this is a story that I know will inspire others to challenge discrimination and to test the limits of what they think is possible. So now it is my deep honor to invite my very dear friend, Minister Madhu, to please come up and to provide his remarks. This stuff is not working. Thank you, Minister Ahir, uh, and, and thank you, everyone, for being here this morning. As Minister of Justice and Solicitor General, today's ceremony is especially meaningful to me to have a public space named after a brave pioneer like Violet King Henry confirms what so many of us 
have known all along. Black history is Alberta's history. We have been so, we have been seamstresses and sleeping car porters like Violet's parent. And we have been lawyers, activists, teachers, and public servants like Violet King. Perhaps you have seen the famous photograph of Violet King Henry that was taken in 1954 after the ceremony admitting her to the Alberta Bar. She is shown shaking hands with Edward J. McCormick, the noted Calgary criminal trial lawyer who ran the firm where she first articled. Her face radiates with pride. How thrilling it must have been for her to imagine all the future black lawyers whose pathway to acceptance will be made just a little bit easier by her example. Violet King Henry would go on to spend her life fighting for people's rights, securing opportunities for black workers, and helping immigrants gain citizenship. I hope that Violet King Henry Plaza serves as a tribute, not only to this exemplary figure, but also to the many black men and women whose lives benefited from the body of her work. Not to mention the many more who were prevented from achieving everything they were capable of simply because of the color of their skin. Thank you, Violet King Henry, and thank you all for being here today. With that, I, I will bring back to the podium our fantastic Minister of Culture, Multiculturalism, and the Status of Women. Mr. Madhu, thank you so much, and it's been such a pleasure sharing this month with you. Thank you for allowing me to be your wingman throughout Black History Month. Next, I'd like to invite up another very, very, very dear friend of mine, Minister Prasad Panda. Thank you. Well, uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Minister Ahir, Minister Madhu. I'm happy to join both of you today, my colleagues, uh, for this uh, good announcement. As you have heard, we are here to honor the exceptional Albertan and uh, Calgarian, Violet King Henry. It's a rare event to name or rename a government of Alberta building structure or space after an individual. To be considered for this honor, that person must be truly extraordinary. Violet King Henry, through her courage and perseverance, made an extraordinary contribution to Alberta. She was a daughter of immigrants who were the target of prejudice when they arrived here in 1911. She grew up in a world that did not encourage her dreams that typically excluded people who looked like her. Yet, she did not hesitate to believe in that society's greatest ideas. And so, uh, she clearly see her place 
within it. She was not afraid to test those ideals, to demand fairness, to remind its people of the values they held to be true. She followed her heart and chose a career in law, one that was unusual for women at that time. And certainly, at that point, a black person had never been called to the bar in Alberta, but she did it. Her achievement was not just a great personal milestone, but a celebration of uh, equality and human rights. It's the kind of determination and success in the place of prejudice that we honor during Black History Month as we work as a society to eradicate uh, racism. So I'm uh, very pleased to work with my colleagues, Minister Ahir and Minister Madhu, uh, to name this plaza. And the plaza is truly a special spot on these uh, beautiful grounds. From now on, when visitors come here, when they admire the breathtaking view of the legislature, the fountains and the gardens, they will hear the name of great Alberton, Violet King Henry. The beauty of the surroundings will be matched by the inspiration of her story. With every event, festival, and gathering held at this plaza post, post-pandemic, we will be keeping the extraordinary, extraordinary legacy of uh, Mrs. King Henry alive. What a pleasure it will be to welcome Albertans and visitors from across Canada and around the world to Violet King Henry Plaza here at uh, Alberta's uh, legislature grounds. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister uh, Ahir and Minister Madhu. Thank you. So I just, I just want to take a moment. I just want to remember this moment, this moment in time. And Joanne, um, Joanne Henry Bent is, uh, is Violet's daughter. And I had the tremendous privilege of speaking with her. And Joanne, if you happen to be watching this, I just want to tell you how proud we are as a government and as people who love this province so much, how proud we are to be here today, to be able to dedicate this space to you. And I can't wait for you to come and join all of us post COVID so we can show you this space that is inspired now by your mom and the work that she did. You know, she was tenacious and she was strong and she never backed down. This is a legacy that all of us need to understand to be able to move forward, to truly do the work that needs to be done to make sure Alberta is the most caring and loving and welcoming space in the world. And as we come out of this pandemic, we will need to heal together in beautiful places like this where we can come together to celebrate this beautiful world. And I have to just say, I have fallen in love with this beautiful woman and I cannot wait to hug you in person post pandemic. So thank you, Joanne, for everything and for sharing this moment with us from Washington, DC. We hope that this legacy will inspire so many young Albertans and that her story inspires Albertans to recognize our province's incredible diversity. This plaza is now a symbol of combating racism in this province. It is an important reminder every single day. And I would like to invite my ministerial brothers to come up here with me to take a quick picture. Thank you so much for being with us online today for this event. We are so honored to be here. Thank you. Minister Panda, do you want to come on this side of the sign over here? Good? Okay. Are we good? One more? My eyelashes.
flashes are frozen. <laughs> All right. Okay, thank you. I know that you had a hard yeah, stop, okay, so okay. you have to take media, right? Any, any questions? Okay. Yeah. Okay, and now we will start media. Um, call operator, can you put through the first caller, please? Perfect question comes from Helen Pike of CBC. Your line is open. Hi, thanks so much for taking my question. Um, I guess, you know, a lot of the Black Lives Matter protests, especially, you know, there were thousands of people in that ex almost exact space, um, but it feels like a lifetime ago, were calling for, um, you know, uh, cuts to police um, and, and, and sort of those, those types of um, actions. Do you think that this symbolic gesture is enough or is, is there more in store for you know for these communities than just you know renaming something so um helen and thank you for your question but let me also say that um it is unfortunate that you would uh, describe this historical event as a symbolic gesture. Um, celebrating the place and contributions of black pioneers in this province is not just a symbolic gesture, it is a real honor and something that I think every member of the black cultural indigenous community would appreciate. Let me also say that um, as I have said previously, I do not believe that defunding the police is a way to ensure fairness, equity, and social justice in, in our society. Uh, let me also say that I was proud that the budget that was tabled yesterday by the President of the Treasury Board and the Minister of Finance did not cut police funding because fundamentally I believe that more than ever, now is not the time to be cutting funding to law enforcement for the sake of cutting funding. That really will be uh, detrimental to the black community who, and other cultural communities whom I'm sure you will agree with me that are by far the most victims of crime. That also said, I have been clear publicly that it is a legitimate debate to have as to whether or not we are funding social programs that ought to help us tackle the issues of discrimination and the underlying root causes of crime. And that is why I was proud to tackle to table Bill 38 at the last session of the legislature, the Justice Status Amendment Act, that provided the new sources of funding for all kinds of social services agencies who devote their time and their life work in tackling root causes of crime and the prevention of crime. So I do think that today is a historic day and I do want to take a moment once again to thank the Minister of Culture, Multiculturalism and the Status of Women and the Minister of Infrastructure for making this possible. Thank you. And that's it for questions, thank you so much.